So I thought I'd make a short video here to uh, explain um, in my selection for picking out a dyno absorber. I've contacted a few uh, manufacturers of absorbers uh, for Nelsa and Clam, both of which are in Spain. Um, I also looked at some of the Chinese options that you can find. I'm in the United States and the only manufacturer of absorbers I can find here is Telma and they didn't seem too interested in talking to me. Also they their units did not come with a through shaft and I would have been basically on my own to make a through shaft or make some sort of a shaft that bolts onto it and that's just more more parts more places for vibration or run out to be an issue so to come up with the requirements here what I've done is um, I have a axle ratio that I can type in and then I just went from engine RPM 1500 to 8000 Of course, the torque would actually be you know, more of a curve, but I've just set a constant here, 800 foot-pounds. Pretty hard to get that kind of power this low, but it's okay. And then if you were to carry that 8,000 RPM, you'd be just around 1,200 horsepower. This just lets me play around with the numbers and kind of see what I'm dealing with. Uh, Here's just the engine horsepower with the speed and torque. Um, the dyno RPM, which is going to be important, I'll show you that what that dyno torque is um, per absorber. Since there's an axle uh, and I have two absorbers, and it's half as much. And that axle ratio just plays into the engine torque to the dyno torque. And of course, it's constant since that was what my input is um, and then the power so mostly this is just a big conversion sheet so this graph here just shows how much uh, power each absorber gonna have to absorb uh, versus the speed given that engine torque and gear axle ratio and what I did is I looked at the data sheets for some of these units, this is the Fernalsa, um, their 250 model and their 380. And I just grabbed some points off uh, their document. Looked at quite a few different models. Here's a data sheet and kind of what some of this stuff looks like. There you can see they come with a through shaft that you can specify. Here's some of the some of the specs here you can look at. Basically, I was just trying to put this data into the spreadsheet so that I could compare it with some of the other absorbers and my requirements. And you can see the braking torque versus the speed, kind of what that looks like. And what's nice about this clam document is that they show the power versus time so this is how much power the absorber can handle for the amount of time as the rotors heat up the braking torque reduces as well as you wouldn't want to over temperature the rotors and remember these are non-contact it's just the eddy currents generated in the rotors cause heat and 1800 RPMs will absorb around 500 horsepower, 380 kilowatts, and we'll do that for maybe 30 seconds. It goes down a little bit for a minute. So I said I wanted to absorb a thousand horsepower for around a minute. So if two of these units, if they were spinning at 1800 RPM, I'd just about be able to do that, maybe a little under a thousand. 
which again, that's, I don't really plan on doing that. And lower speeds because there's less air movement. You have less cooling and you can absorb less power for kind of the same amount of time. If you look here though, you can absorb. Um, it'll provide about 2250 or a little more foot pounds of torque, 600 RPM. I'm looking at the pull, we just look over here. 600 RPM is with 411 gears, about 2500 engine RPM. So some of this will be dependent kind of on what gearing you have. I created this comparison sheet, and so I just created the put those plots what the braking torque is versus the speed into here and overlaid them. So I have uh, the required torque being this blue line since I set that as a constant in the uh, first sheet there. So the engine's producing 800 foot pounds and you have 411 gears. That's where you'd be at per Per absorber, the amount of torque you'd need to absorb. You can see the Clam Model 300. It could do it in between this speed range, but it kind of falls out. And then also your time that you can absorb that is going to be shorter. So really, I was interested in this 360 model here and the uh, Fresnelsa. 380, which has a little bit, according to their plots, the best, I mean, I'm reading these and, and just trying to grab numbers the best I can and plotting those. The Fresnelsa shows it's able to provide a little bit more torque on the low end, and it does have slightly larger rotors, so that does make sense. And the clam was able to provide a little bit more braking torque higher RPM, but you can see with the 411 gears at 1500 engine RPM, we'd be down here anyhow, so there's not much need to be lower speed here. I think this will give me plenty of headroom as the, uh, you know, to hold that power steady state. If we just play around with this, you know, I mean, 800 foot pounds is quite a lot of torque. If you just did a thousand, a thousand shifts you up here, <clears throat> which now the Fresnelsa helps out a little bit, I think, but we'll talk about some more differences here in a minute. Looks like if we come here about six five hundred RPM to maybe twelve fifty or thirteen hundred dyno RPM, the clam would be more than sufficient at providing that braking torque. And six hundred RPM is around twenty five hundred on the engine with four eleven gears. So that's good. I mean, that's pretty, that's lugging the engine. I, most dyno pools don't go down much below that. And then up to, what do we say, maybe 1300, yeah, 5400. Generally, the torque will fall off on an engine. So I'm not too concerned with numbers exceeding 6,000 RPM engine speed. You can just see how some of this changes. So there's what it looks like 411 gears. I guess I could have put this on that other sheet. So yeah, I think a lot of cars run maybe 373s, pretty common gear. And you can see it actually, see how much of a difference that makes. 
as you get closer to drag cars, you'd be looking at you know, 5.11s, maybe 4.11s, 5.11s, but uh, most people with their drag car are not going to want to hold that steady state, and you see how high it pushes that at 1,000 foot-pounds of engine torque. That's just ridiculous, you know, honestly. And just because the absorber only provides, you know, up to this much braking torque doesn't mean I can't dyno a car that produces more torque because the rotors have so much inertia that once I program that inertia into the computer, what will happen is the dynos will be accelerated you know, as you if you open the throttle on the car even if it's providing max torque if you're exceeding that the, the dynos will just accelerate so they won't be held at a steady speed they'll accelerate and increase in speed and if you track that acceleration and you know the system's inertia you can pretty accurately determine what the power is throughout that RPM range so you know, a dyno like this, even though I'm kind of sizing it here for a thousand horsepower steady state, you know, it could probably fairly accurately dyno a possibly a 2,500 horsepower car. Some of these models here, here's the Chinese model, this key EAO KD300, the Clam 300, the Clam 360. The Fresnelsa 250 and the Fresnelsa 380 were the ones I picked to compare. And Clam also makes larger models, and I think they even have like a 500 or something ridiculous. I have blocked out the cost. These are the totals, though, and these are approximate, but they weren't too far off from each other. Like the, the Fresnelsa and the Clam. Uh, the 380 versus the 360 models here they were very similar in price after shipping um, it was actually quite a hard decision i did end up choosing the clam i probably honestly annoyed the <laughs> sales guy over there but he was very nice um, it was nice talking to them i felt like the clam Absorbers had better documentation. Um, these these data sheets, I feel like, were more furnished with more details. Um, another thing that really attracted me to the clam was the max speed was significantly higher, and I felt like that meant it was probably um, better balanced or used more premium bearings inside of it. Also, I was informed that the clams rotors are stainless steel instead of iron or uh, plain steel. So that'd be nice that they don't get all rusty. I'll probably try to keep them lightly oiled or maybe paint them. But after talking to companies, I, I can't say anything bad about Fresnelsa or um, some of the other brands I talked to, N nothing against them at all. I just decided to go with the clams because the price was so similar. I mean, <laughs> these are kind of made up prices, you know, of course, I I'm not going to give you the exact number, but they came in very close to each other. And it was really just came down to, I guess, personal preference to go with the clam. Um, they both had uh, different offerings and shafts. You can get, here's one of the offerings from Clam. I hope they don't mind me sharing this. <clears throat> I'd imagine they don't because if you contact them and we're looking for the same thing, I'm sure they're going to provide you with a similar drawing here. So this is ultimately the unit I selected. Actually, <clears throat> I know this is 300 down here. I went with the 360. They, I think, use the same 
rotors and shafts, but the 360 has larger coils on it. Well, you can see here it's a 50 millimeter shaft with a 14 millimeter key, I believe. Yeah, right there, 14 millimeter key. Um, I did some of the math on that, and I think that'll be sufficient personally for the max amount of torque that you can transmit through these. I would like to see a larger keyway. Um, keys are not the most ideal thing for transmitting torque. Splines are certainly better, and splines were an option, but because of the um, incredible cost to me to be able to spline something, to put internal splines on a hub. Um, it just was not economical for me, or really practical for me to do that. Um, I got very rough quote. It was like $2,000 to put those kind of splines on the inside of a hub. So I decided to stick with the key. I've seen it works for other people. It should be more incapable of holding the torque I plan to transmit through these. And there's other ways around it. They're using a quick disconnect bushing, which is basically a split bushing here that does have the keyway, but you can see it's split. And this is a sprocket, but you can imagine this being like a hub or a big uh, flange with bolt holes. Um, and this is a taper. This piece tightens up inside of here and because of the taper it will actually uh, clamp on the shaft and provide because of the friction will provide uh, transmissible torque through this whole surface and these actually clamp the shaft so tightly that even if you didn't have the key it would be able to transmit the amount of torque um, that I'm trying to absorb with these units. So this is kind of the plan going forward as I'll make the hubs such that I can get these quick disconnect bushings and install them. You can actually just buy these weld on uh, hubs so I could take a larger disk of material have a welder weld this together get the matching bushing to go in here that fits the dyno absorber shaft and then have a machinist with a larger lathe than mine true true it all back up because there probably will be some distortion from the welding and then I should have a solid connection to the shaft of these absorbers so I'm expecting these to arrive any day now um, it's been kind of slow shipping from, from Spain, but I'm excited to receive these and, and get working on the actual building process. This may be a little bit longer project just because of the funds and time involved. I'm going to have to send out some of the parts for machining like the hubs, and I'll probably hire a welder. Thanks for watching. I just want to make this uh, video showing that I am still working on these projects. Um, it's getting a little tough with the holidays and everything, but we're getting there. And I uh, hope you guys stick around and see what the results are like. Thanks. Bye.